had a man of God call me last week. He prophesied these words over Elkhorn Baptist Church, and I want to give them to you this morning. And uh, this is not the text I'm preaching out of, but this is what I want to give you this morning to set the foundation, okay? And I want you to write this verse down because I think it's a good word for everybody under my voice in teaching today. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Now I want you all to listen to this. I want this to get in your spirit, okay? It says in verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it says, However, as it is written, However, as it is written, listen to this, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has in store for those who love him. Him. That just blows my mind when I think about that. Because you think about the best and the biggest things in this world, God says you still ain't arrived. You still haven't arrived. If your eye can see it, God's bigger. If your ear can hear it, God's a whole lot bigger. If your mind can think about it, God's so much bigger. See, what the church is lacking is faith. Believing that, that if I, my eyes have not seen, my ears have not heard, and my mind cannot conceive what God has in store for me. So my prayer for Elkhorn and for everyone under my voice where you're listening by radio or wherever you're at today is that you would quit playing church. You would, you would just quit putting a check mark beside your name and thinking that fixed you for the week. And we would be sold out to the Lord. We would be so sold out to God that there would be no empty chairs in the house, that you've got so much of God in you that you said, you know what, I'm going to bring somebody with me. See, I'm not going to heaven by myself. I'm going to take as many with me as I possibly can. I want them all. If you don't want yours, I'll take yours. Amen. How's that sound? Today, I want to give you a word that God really has been dealing with me ever since November. And uh, I want to give you this word. And um, I titled this sermon... The first belongs to God. Now, see, we know that. We know that here. But I'm talking, I wanted to drop 16 inches this morning. I wanted to go from your mind to your heart, and I, I wanted to get into your spirit, and I want you to give God the best. See, there's something powerful about the first things. Listen to me. The first things, the first fruits. There's something about when God says, I am first of the Godhead. That's something important there. God wants to be first in your life. How many of y'all know that? God wants to be first in your life. See, we know that, but I'm going to say it again because I want this to register in your spirit. God wants to be first in your life. According to Scripture, the first was called devoted ones. Now, I want to give you the definition for devoted ones if you're taking notes. Devoted means to be set apart by a vow or a covenant. Now, listen to this. This is good. Devoted ones means that I am set apart, I am set aside by a vow or a covenant unto God. So that means this. Here's how I wrote this down. In order, in other words, when you give God your first and, and, and he, you're devoted to Him, God is required by a vow or a covenant to do what He said He was going to do. So that means this. If I'm sold out unto God, he is first in my life. I am a devoted one. I am a follower unto God. There is nobody in this world, there is nothing in this world that can stop the power of God in my life. God is devoted by a covenant, a vow. To say these words, that I give God my first, he says, I am required now by my vow, by a covenant, to give you what I promised you. Do y'all realize what I'm speaking to you this morning? That means if you do what God asked you to do, He has already done what He said He would do. Amen? Yeah. So that means this, something's wrong. Something's missing. See, I think the church has blamed God for way too much, and it's not God lacking in His promises. It's His people doing what they said they would do. That's the truth. I've always said this. You've got as much of what? How much of Him do you want? Because here's the thing, we have set back too long as a church, and I'm not setting back no more. Uh-uh. 
Old Rafferty's on fire. And, I, and, and I'm just telling you the truth. I cannot sit back and watch people die and go to hell no longer. It bothers me, Brother Jim. It really gets down in my spirit when I think about this. So God said, if I do what, what I said I would do, he has already done what he said he would do. God's waiting, watch this. God is waiting on me and you to do what we said we would do. And when we do that, Elkhorn Baptist Church, you think it's crowded in here today, it, nobody can hold us. And I hear people all the time say, well, I don't know about that. You, I don't know. I had people even say when we was putting out chairs, they said, well, I don't know why y'all putting out so many chairs. Because we're going to fill them. I would much rather be a dreamer, a wet water walker, than a dry boat talker any day. I'm going to set them out. We're going to build his church. God's going to, hey, we're going to preach his name. And God says, I'll draw them. I'll do the rest. All we've got to do is open our. And the church is not doing it. Well, I, I don't know the Bible like you. Well, read it. Quit making excuses for people to go to hell. Listen, it's going to get hot in here. But watch this. I'm going to read you a very unique scripture. I guarantee some of you probably have never even heard the scripture that I'm going to read you today. But it's so good. It got in my spirit. And I want to give it to you. If you have your Bible, Exodus chapter 13 is where we're going. I hear people say all the time, they say, well, the Old Testament's the Old Testament's, and we're not under the law. Okay, go ahead and break the law, then you'll go to jail. Go ahead, when the speed limit says 55, go ahead and run 95. And I guarantee you'll see blue lights behind you. It's not Kmart blue light special either. You'll go to jail. We, listen to me. We're, no, we're under grace, but I obey the law. The old, the old Testament is the schoolmaster, the schoolmaker of the New Testament. Without the Old Testament, you can't have the New Testament. It, it's the foundation of who we are. I wrote this down. We serve a conditional God. I want you all to write that down. You serve a conditional God. The Bible says if we turn from our evil ways, God will heal us and heal our lands. Amen? God says these words, if you humble yourself, he will raise you up. God says, if you choose me this day, I will bless you. I will go before you. But he says, if, 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 if. Turn your neighbor and say, if. if. Yeah. If we do this, God will do what he said he would do. Listen to me. The reason why some of you are missing the promises of God is because you're not being obedient to what God has called, told you to do. If, if, if my people do it. Look at this, Exodus chapter 13, very unique scripture. It's talking about the first fruits. First fruits is an offering, it's, bu it's above your tithe. Because your first fruits, is, it's above and beyond what you normally could give. I'm praying for a holy, holy energy in this church. We've got one more week with first fruits. One more week. This next week, you don't want to miss it. I'm telling you if, you, if you're not here, shame on you. I'm telling you, God is in this house. Great and mighty. We're having so much good word in this house. Next week, we got uh, y'all need to pray about this. George Hergen, um, he got sick, and he was on, uh, they found him unconscious last week, and, but he's back up, and we're praying he's going to be in the house here tomorrow to break the bread of life. So we need to pray really hard that Brother George is going to be here preaching tomorrow night. Then we got Billy Carroll. Wednesday night, we got Steve Ayers. And Thursday and Friday, we got Eric Gilbert. You don't want to miss these men of God because they're going to break the bread of life. Amen. Exodus chapter 13, if you're there, say amen. Hang with me just a moment. Verse 11 through 13. He says in verse 11, After the Lord brings you, listen to this, into the land of the Canaanites and gives it to you. Listen to me. God says, where I take you, I'll give it to you. Moses said these words. He said, everywhere my feet tread, it's mine. And I know you don't hear teachers like this a lot in church, but I'm going to teach you a word I really believe God gave me. It says, and he gives it to us. Listen, as he promised an oath, a covenant, a vow to you and to your forefathers. You, listen to this, you are to give over to the Lord the first or the second or the third. Which one did he ask for? First, offspring of every womb. Talking about the child. And all the firstborn makes your livestock, listen to this, belong to the Lord. So God says, if you give me your first, I'll take care of the rest. 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. All these other things shall be added unto thee. We know Matthew 6, but have you made that a covenant under your, under your life? Watch this. It says, verse 13, Redeem with a lamb every firstborn donkey. <laughs> this is weird scripture, but it's good. Redeem them, the first. Give me your first. Watch what he says. Redeem with a lamb every firstborn donkey. If, listen, if you do not redeem it, break its neck. Oh, it's going to get good. If you don't redeem it, break its neck. Now listen, I didn't write the Bible. I just believe it. And I'm going to teach you a principle here today of, of first fruits, of your best, not your leftovers. God says you redeem it or you break the donkey's neck. You break the animal's neck. Redeem every firstborn among your sons and your daughters and your family and your work and your tithe and your offerings. Everything. Watch this. Everything belongs to God. That chair you're sitting in right now, it is not Elkhorn Baptist Churches. It is the Lord's. Hallelujah. Amen. This house is God's house. Your children, praise God, I love your babies. But they're not yours. God's allowed you and blessed you. He loaned you that child, hallelujah, just for a little while. So while they're here and while they're alive, give them back to who they belong to. That's the problem with some of the parents today. Their children are 25 and 30 years of age, and they've not given them over to the Lord. I'm telling you where there's peace in the house is where I rest assured this is not my church. I belong to the Lord. And when I preach his name, I'm telling you what happens is you don't belong to me and I don't belong to you. We belong to the Lord. Yeah. Y'all getting this word in your spirit? Rest assured, if we are keeping the cross, why people say, why is the cross in the center of the church? That's where it needs to be. You've got the cross in the center of your home. Your home will be blood-bought. Hallelujah. You've got the cross in the center of your church. You ain't got to worry about the rest of the stuff because it's in the middle. It's in the center. That's where we're at. That's where I belong. That's where I'm going to worship somebody. Praise his name. It's all about the cross being in the center of everything you got. Oh, it sounds good, preacher. Isn't it amazing how we'll worship him on Sunday but live like hell on Monday? And I'm going to give you a word. Y'all got you. If you don't have very many toes this morning, because I know Brother Jeff, he ruined about nine of mine last night. I got one more, and God said, give that to me too. Ain't my toes. Hallelujah. Chew. Everything in the, God said belongs to him. This floor, those rails, this cross, my soul, the hair on my head. God loves me so much. In Matthew chapter 10, he says, I know how I can, I can number your hair. When one falls out, I still know a number. Hallelujah. Everything. Y'all listen to me. Everything in this world belongs to God. There was an enemy. His name was Satan. He came along and he stole it. That's why he says, I'm going back to the enemy's camp and I'm going to take back what Satan has stolen from me. It belongs to me. Satan just stole it from me. That's why as a mom or a dad or a church member, you've got to realize who you are and who you belong to. Praise the Lord. My God. I belong to the Lord. God says, give me your babies. Give me your livestock. Give me your crops. Give me your first fruits. Give me everything. And watch this. Whether you give it to him or not, it's still his. Y'all got that? Whether you, whatever, if you don't give it to him, it's still his. He just wants to bless you. And so many people are hoarders, man. They'll, they'll hang on to what, what God says. Here, I, I'll give you a child. I'll give you the best crop of the year. I'll bless your home. I'll bless your children. And then when something goes wrong, you hang on to them. God's saying, let go of them and give them back to me because they belong to me. If not, break their neck. Now listen, God is not a sissy. <laughs> God is no joke. We, we randomly say his name very loosely from our lips. 
People use the word GD and they cuss and they, they use these foul language, these words. I'm going to tell you, your mouth was made for the, for the word of God. Everything that is in you will eventually come through you. But I'm begging you today, if it's God, it will be God. Hallelujah. Well, God's speaking to me. Listen to this. If something belongs to God, you need to give it to him. My money is not my money, it's God's money. And this is a word. I really believe God has given El Corcoran. Listen to me. If we're going to go to a new level, you've got to quit claiming what's yours and what's not yours. Oops. I had a Britney Spear moment. Oops. That's mine. No, it's not. That's my child. No, it's not. This is El Corcoran's my child. No, it's not. Well, it's a tough word, but it's good. God said, if something belongs to me, he even used this word, hey, would. He said, don't you ride a donkey to work if you have not redeemed it. <laughs> don't you drive, I'm going to be honest with you, I think we take him too loose. He said, don't you get on my donkey. <laughs> it's crazy, but it's true. And ride my donkey to work if you've not redeemed it. If you've not redeemed the donkey, break its neck. Because it's my donkey. It's his donkey. This is his church. I'm his man. You're his daughter. That child that you're holding in your arms right now, moms, praise God. I'm glad God, I'm glad God loaned that child to you, but that's God's child. And when we, as God's people, learn to give God what God deserves, woo, we'll see victory in Jesus. Let me explain something to you. See, so many churches are not putting God first, and they wonder why things aren't working. You want me to tell you why real quick? See, we, we go to come, a lot of churches are going to going to church and they're doing things, this, that, and the other. And we're asking the question, how come things are not working? Let me tell you, because they are building off broke neck principles. Can y'all handle some truth in here today? A lot of churches are building off of a broke neck principle. It's broken. And they're trying to fix it, and it's dead, and it's lying dormant. It's there. I know people that would come to my office, they'll say, Oh, I love him. Oh, my God, I love him. I need him in my life. Pastor, why? Why would God take him away from me? Let me go ahead and tell you. Because it's a broke neck relationship. Broke neck. And a lot of people are trying to put a lot of things together that are broken. See, a lot of marriages are broken today. A lot of churches are broken today. A lot of youth are broken today. Because why? They are not under the blood of God. They've not been redeemed. They've not been purchased. They've not been bought. They are not under the blood of Jesus. And a lot of homes. You know, you know why there's divorces in America? I'm a divorced man. You know why I got divorced? I'll make it personal. You know why I got divorced? It's not that she was a bad, 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 bad. I wanted to say she was. And it would be so easy for me to sit here and say, it's her fault. It's this, this, that. God did not put it together. What God, somebody help me preach. What God puts together, no man can separate, can break, or destroy. And you ought to give God a praise in this house today. Because if God puts it together, it's together. Hallelujah. Woo! Lord, I praise you. That's good preaching whether you like it or not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a lot of broke neck situations in this church right now. You're trying to fix things. It's not been redeemed. It's not been redeemed. And we're trying to fix relationships. We're trying to fix churches. We're trying to do this and we're trying to do that. Listen to me. Just because you've got a pastor in front of you, it does not mean he's been redeemed. I believe there's going to be a lot of preachers in hell. Now, I know this is a tough word in Camelsville, Kentucky. But it's true word. Listen to me. There's one way you can go to heaven. Hallelujah. It is not by being a good man or a good woman. You know, see, we're so religious anymore in the churches. Y'all can finish my sentences. But it's not become a reality. Why aren't churches working? Because they're built off broke neck principles. It's dead. Ooh, hallelujah. 
dead. You walk in, it's the First Baptist of Frigidaire. Polar Bear Express. Y'all know, you know I'm telling you gospel truth in this town. Y'all sitting there looking at me. Boy, 100 people, he made him mad now. I don't care. When you're under the anointing, there'll be a boldness come over you, and you're sitting there going, I don't care. You've got to quit caring about what people think, and you've got to put the cross before you and say, God, nothing broken is going to stand between me and the cross. God, it's got to be redeemed. It's got to be fixed. I can't move. I can't do anything. God, I've got to have you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Here's two things I want to give you real quick, and I'm done. Y'all go ahead and laugh. Let's get that out of the way. <laughs> yeah, I heard that before. I met my match last night, though. Jeff said it four times. <laughs> first fruits, first fruits, first fruits. Giving God my, not my leftovers, giving God my best. My best. We know it here, but something happens from Sunday morning to Sunday night, the rapture takes place. Watch this. Two things about the first fruits. Number one, when I read, this is what God gave me the first governs the rest. Listen to me. I'm going to help you in this house tonight if you'll listen to me. The first governs the rest. If you have your Bibles, turn to Romans real quick. <coughs> Brother Troy Long come to me. He said, man, I love your church. So I'm, I'm madly crazy, deeply in love with them too. And he said, if you ever resign, I'm putting my resume in. <laughs> I'm not resigning. Look here, Romans 11, y'all there say amen. amen. Turn to your neighbor, and I want you to remind them, are you giving God the best, your best? Come on, are you giving God your best? Romans 11, look here, in verse 16. Romans 11, verse 16 says these words. If the part, listen, if the part, I love this. If the part of the dough offered as first fruits, if just part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, listen to this, then the whole batch is holy. Y'all get this? If I give God my best, just a part, and you say, Brian, a part, God says, I, I'll take, listen, I don't care if the devil has 99% of you, God will take 1% that is left over and make it holy if you allow him to. Amen. He's that big and he's that good. God says, if a little bit of holiness is in you, guess what it'll do? It'll rub off on the rest of the batch. How many of y'all remember mama telling you one bad apple will, will spoil them all? Hey, mama told truth. Mama always said a little bird come by and told her what, what, what I was doing at school. I always hunted for that bird. I could never find it. <laughs> I finally found out it was the Holy Spirit. Mama knew stuff. Couldn't get away with anything. Hallelujah. Your first governs the rest. What happens to the first? What happens to the rest? Y'all listen to me. Why are we doing this first fruits? The first of the year is what God gave me. If you give me the first of your year, Hallelujah. If you give me the first of your year, I'll take care of the rest of the year. Listen to me. He'll do it. See, we're so religious. 21st century church. God says what makes him sick is lukewarm like Jeff said, but also it says that in the last day, they'll have a form of religion, but they'll, but they'll deny the power. They'll deny the power from God. See, what you do with the first part of your year, God will govern what happens with the rest of the year. What I do with, listen to me, with the first part of my day, when I get up in the morning, and I'm not giving you a Bible preaching answer, listen to me, or a great theological answer, I'm telling you, if you will get up in the morning, if you got to get up earlier, or whatever you do, but if you'll seek the Lord first in the day, He'll take care of the rest, Hallelujah. That means when something comes your way that's bigger than you, you can say, God, I've already died to that. Lord, I can't even think about it no more. I'm just going to walk out my salvation. Hallelujah. Give God your year. Give him your day. I thought about tithe, and preachers are scared to death to talk about tithe anymore. I'm not. 
Because here's the deal. I'm not going to stand before God one day and look at God and God say, Brian, I commissioned you to preach the word, and you backed off the word. I'm not doing it. I'd much rather the world hate me and go to heaven than love me and die and go to hell. That's right. Tithe. Give God the first of your check, he'll take care of the rest of your check. Give him the tenth, he'll take care of the ninety. You say, Brian, I can't afford to. No, you can't afford not to. Hallelujah. Give him your best. God said this promise. If you give me the first of your check, I'll open the floodgates of heaven and I'll pour down manna from heaven that your barns can't even contain it. Your churches will grow. We should never have to borrow money to build a church. Listen to me. You, you learn people, if y'all got a job, if you got, or hope, you ain't got one. You got one, don't you? You're getting one. Who's got a job over here? Give God. I'm, I'm going to tell you why you're young. Give God the first fruits of your check. And I promise you, as a man of God standing in front of you today, if you do that, he'll take care of the rest of your check. Thus saith the Lord. We should never have to borrow a penny to build God's kingdom. Never have to borrow a penny to build God's kingdom. Amen. Somebody, I'm going to say it to y'all again. Say amen or something. You should never. Amen. They got my back. You should never have to borrow a penny to build God's kingdom. If everybody in here today would tithe, I guarantee you, listen to me, we're going to be about a $20,000 tithe offering here today. But you know what? You've got the same people doing the same things, tithing, and everybody else is sitting back and wanting the benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Right. Whoa, that's good preaching. Yeah. I know y'all don't like it, but it's some good preaching. Yeah. See, how many of y'all want to be blessed? Yeah. Watch this. Everybody's hand goes, bless me, Lord. Bless me. I want the benefits of God. But you're not doing what he said. What if I told you God has already got everything for you Said it, said it. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard. The mind cannot even comprehend what God has in store for those who love. God's already got your blessing in store, in the storehouse. Oh, this is good. God is just feeding me. Listen to this. So God says, bring your tithe to the store. And then God said, if you bring it to the storehouse, I will open heaven and bless you. First fruits. It's more than money. First fruit. It's more than children. First fruits. It's more than being in church today. Hallelujah. First fruits. It all belongs to God anyway. So if God owns it, just give it to him. Just give it to him. I thought about this too. Everybody says these words. Well, God says in the Bible, 1 Corinthians, the first day of the week, come to church. The first day of the week is Sunday. I hear people say this all the time. Well, Brian, I can worship God out in the woods. Brian, I will start my own Bible study at home and stay away from God's people. Have you ever led a bear or a raccoon or a squirrel to the Lord? I don't understand people's minds. Let me tell you something. When I come to God's house, my spirit leaps within me. I see that cross and stuff goes, hey, you're home now. I connect with that. I need to worship. I need to praise him. I need to bow down. I need God's people. Somebody, I don't know about you. Y'all don't sound like y'all need nothing. You say, Brian, it's not about a clap. Yes, it is, says the Lord. God says, my people will come together and raise holy hands. My people will come together and make a joyful noise. Y'all know we noise a bunch of people. God says my people will come together and experience something like never before. But you've got to give him the first. God don't want your nasty, sloppy second leftovers. When I played football and I wasn't very good, I wasn't. I played the bench most of the time, but every once in a while, coach say, Raffrey, get in there. And I was like, oh, Jesus. You know, but when I got on that field, I wasn't very talented, but I gave my team everything I had. Shh, my God. And I'm here to declare to you today, 
I'm not the best preacher in the world. I'm not the best man in the world to be here. But I'm telling you this, I'm sold out. I'm in. I'm not justified. I've got the cross in front of me. And I'm not backing down, said the Lord. I'm going to preach his name. Shout his name. Hey, if I've got to dance, I'll dance. If I've got to shout, I'll shout. Hallelujah. I praise his name. Hey, hallelujah. Yeah. You say, Brian, you sure get excited. Hey, he's something to get excited about. I think everybody under my voice today is going to be shocked, including me when we get to heaven. The angels are going to bow down. The 24 elders are going to be at the throne room. There's going to be a great cloud of witnesses like never before. And God says, you're going to sing to me a new song. A song that nobody else has even heard. And God, in the middle of the sea, is going to rise up. And we're going to bow down. Blessed be his name. I would much rather be called a Jesus freak. I'd much rather people look at me and say, man, Brian gets crazy. I'd much rather people look at my life and say, you know what? That when I die, I gave God my best. If I really believe the Bible and I believe time's running out, if we're in the last quarter, we better score a touchdown. Let me ask something. If the rapture were to take place right now, and if you stood before God, could you honestly say, God, I've given you my best? Praise team, I know it's very tiring up on that stage. I'm tired, but you know what? When you get into the anointing, I can run through a brick wall right now. I can. Now, when I get done preaching, but I'm telling you, when God's anointing is in his house, stick with it. Everything you give God should be the first and the best. First and the best. Everybody say the first and the best. Look at this, number two point. Y'all turn some air on. I'm about to die. You say, Brian, you're, you're preaching too hard. <laughs> Y'all ain't getting it, are you? <laughs> I'm not backing down. So here's the deal. Whatever happens, happens. But I'm ready for go to that next level. Elkhorn, God's been dealing with me. Two times we've been to this point. Two times. Two times you've been to the threshold. And like, I don't know, it was Brother Troy. Didn't even know nothing about our church. He said, Elkhorn, you've been around the threshold, and you've been dancing around it for too long. See, everybody says we want more until it's time to give more. And I declare today, if this is the threshold, we need to step over. Right. And step in, and watch this, and don't look back. That's the problem. We get over the threshold, and we start looking back and say, who I did it. No, there's another threshold. There's another threshold. There's another threshold. And another threshold. My whole life has been a threshold. And at the threshold, there's usually a mat. <laughs> and there's been people come in my life, and they try to dust, make me mud. And you know what I'm talking about. But you keep moving. You keep going. You keep doing. Second point is this. The first is always for the Lord. Sounds simple, don't it? God can only redeem what is broken and unclean. Listen to me. God can only redeem what is broken and unclean. Last night, God had to break me. You say, Brian, why? Because pride. Pride. You say, golly, man, you, you tell everybody everything, don't you? I, I, yeah, I don't care. Because I know it's true. And I get set free. Hallelujah. When I start talking and speaking the truth, service is going well. People pay rubbing you on the back and say, boy, that was good. Good job. Way to have that vision. Instead of me turning around saying, you know what? That's God's vision. I know I'm not preaching. That's okay. But it's so true. So God had to break me so he could redeem me again. God had to break me to fill me up again. In your marriage, there's a lot of times some of you will go through some hard seasons of your life. God is breaking your marriage to make you have a stronger marriage. If you're never broken, you can never be fixed. 
God wants a broken church. God wants a broken people. God wants a broken nation that will stand up when everybody else sits down. That will stand on the word of God. Here's what I will tell you today. If anything or anybody else can redeem you, put it first in your life. This is a hard word. If anything or anybody else can redeem you, Ashley, serve it. Worship it. Give it your best. If Muhammad can do it, serve Muhammad. If Buddha can do it, serve Buddha. If mammon can do it, money can do it, work can do it, put it first in your life. But I declare today, I've lived long enough, there's some things that money just can't fix. There's some things that a doctor just can't fix. There's some things in my life only the blood, the cross can fix. So I declare today, if God is first in your life, if he, if he can redeem you, put him first. If anything else, youth, if anything else can fix y'all, serve it. If anything else can fix you, redeem you, serve it. If anything else can redeem you and save you and fix you, serve it. If anything else can redeem you, fix you, serve it, put it first. But if you sit and tell me today that God is my redeemer, I'm saved, I'm blood-bought, and you're still not serving it, that means you're serving something else. So my heart check for you today is this. It's easy to worship on Sunday. But what is broken between you and this cross? Y'all remember the children of Israel. This is a tough word too. They're in Egypt. He said the death angel is coming through Egypt. Y'all remember this, don't you? The death angel is coming through Egypt. And if he does not see the blood on the post, y'all remember this, don't you? If he did not, if that death angel does not see the blood on the post, and a lot of people don't realize, but Josephus, the great Jewish historian, said they would put a cross on the blood uh, on the post. That death angel would kill the firstborn. That's tough. I don't understand that. But I love what God said. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That death angel's coming through. And if that death angel sees the blood on the post, he'll pass your house by. And here's what God just spoke unto me, and write this down. The death angel is still alive. That death angel is Satan. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We know that here. But what God is just speaking into my heart and into my spirit to give you here today is this. When he passes by your house... Is your house under the blood? Because if your house is under the blood, he'll pass you by. But if not, have y'all ever thought about this? Maybe the reason why your house is broken and falling apart is because it's not under the blood. I've been in revivals before. I was at First Baptist Church in Monticello. I'll never forget this. I preached a, a message. I can't remember what it was. But that day, a deacon came forward and gave his heart to Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'll never forget this. I, I thought he was just coming to the altar to pray. But he came to the altar and he said these words. He said, Brian, he said, I finally realized tonight <laughs> that if I, my heart were to stop, I really and truly don't know Jesus Christ. A deacon. A deacon said that. And I'll never forget these words. After the, my sermon was over and after I led him to the Lord, I, I pronounced him to the church. And you should have seen the people's reactions. Because their deacon just got saved. But can I tell you that deacon made a stand that day. He says, you know what? I'm not worried about the people. I'm not worried about what they think. I'm worried about my soul. I'm not worried about nothing in this world but getting to that cross right there. And that's what he said. Now listen to me. This church, after it was over, they called me back to a meeting. And they dismissed that deacon of that church. Now, I'm going to square y'all up in this house today. He got saved, hallelujah. He's ready to serve now. 
You don't kick people when they're down. You don't kick people when they try to make a decision for God. I'm glad we got drug dealers in the house. I'm glad you say, Brian, where are they at? I don't, why do you want to know? I'm glad we got people in this house that don't look just like me and act like me and look, oh, hallelujah. I'm glad we got people that are dysfunctional. You say, well, I'm not dysfunctional. You put the fun in dysfunctional. <laughs> Everybody in here today needs to be closer to God. Amen? Amen. What is broken in your life? God says, if it's not redeemed, break its neck. Wow, Courtney. A lot of people are living off of broke neck principles. Your marriage is broken because the husband's not sold out to God. That's truth. Men, listen to me. Listen to me, men. <laughs> be the men of God. You don't have to be ordained. You don't have to have a title to be a man of God. You will, Courtney, Mitchell, y'all was exactly right. One day, Mitchell will stand before God. This mess, y'all, this messes me up. One day I will stand before God on how I treat my wife. Yep. Yep. Yes, One day I will stand before God how I raise my children. Yep. One day I will stand before God Almighty how I pastor this church. See, we know that. That's speaking in tongues right there. <laughs> I believe that baby just said Jesus loves you. A lot of you are trying to fix yourself off of broke neck principles. God says either redeem it or break its neck. A lot of you right now are broken. But can I tell you the only way you're going to be redeemed is to come and fall at this cross and say, God, I am here today to worship you and only you. Youth, don't grow up and be like me. Start while you're young. Be sold out. May God, may y'all be pure and holy and righteous. Save your body for the wedding day. Right. So, Lord, I preached your word. And, God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. God, that we quit trying to build homes and families and churches off of broke neck principles. God, you said either redeem it or break its neck. And God, I really believe under my voice today, there's a lot of people here today <laughs> that are living off of broke neck stuff. And so, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, God, that you would continue to do what you're doing. God, use us. Use us, Lord. I pray this prayer believing that all things are possible. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, all God was saying in Exodus 13 was give me your first. If you give God the first, he'll take care of the rest. Y'all got this? Please hang with me. I know it's hot in here, but I really believe a lot of times distractions will take you away from your blessing. You got to learn how to fight through this stuff. We got to learn how to fight through this stuff. How many of you could honestly say right now, say, Brian, I'm not giving God my first. I'm giving him my sloppy seconds. I am not what I need to be. I'm getting better, but I need more. Seems like that's been a theme. Through all this revival. First night I preached the word, January the 2nd. I said, too many of you are acting like a guest. You're in the guest room. And God says, I want you to go from the guest room to the large room, the upper room. And there you'll find everything is furnished. Everything you need is furnished. Allison, everything you need is furnished. Let this sink in your skull. I'm not radical. People call me radical because I get excited for God. I just believe the Bible. 
I just believe the Bible. If God said it, that settles it. And churches are trying to vote on growing God. I've seen more churches split on growing God's church. And why are they even voting on it? Why in the world are people voting on what God has already established? Well, she deserves to be treated like that. No, you're the God man of that house. You, you need to wash her feet. You need to bow down, hallelujah, and drop that old stinking pride in your life. I had a couple come to my office, and boy, he liked the part where it said, women, obey your husbands. He liked that part. And I looked at that joker, and I said, let me ask you something. Are you obeying God? Because if you're obeying God, she can obey you. But if you're not obeying God, she don't need to obey you. That's right. Yeah, hallelujah. Broke neck principles. Broke neck principles. God, I want you. I want more of you. And God says, all right. Do this. Nah. I'm not going to do it. So in the name of Jesus, I love you. But I can't make you come to this cross. I can't. I want to. If I knew you was lost in this house, I'd be right on you right now. But I can't. Because then you'd be getting saved for me. And you know what that means? You're lost. I just pray in the name of Jesus all over everybody here today. That man, you'd be sold out first fruits, no leftovers. And y'all know, listen to me, you know what you need to do. You know right now what you need to do. You know right now what's going on in your life. You know right now the principles that God wants you to have. Why in the world does it take a loud mouth Baptist preacher to stand up? And to tell you what you already know. The Bible says if you know to do right and you continue to do wrong, that is sin. The Bible says that all unrighteousness is like filthy rags. But I love what John says. He compared Jesus to the Lamb of God. He says, lo, behold, now the Lamb of God who takes away all the sins of the world. One day, from that corner all the way back around, one by one, including me, now I have to look God in the eye. Now I have to give an account on my life. So why in the world would I back down? Why in the world? If I believe the word, why would I back down? I can't. I won't. I got that I can't help it. And guys, either you're going to get on board or you're not going to fit in well at this church. Either you're going to say, yep, this is the right word. They'll preach the word of God. He steps on my toes. But thus saith the Lord. Either you're going to get on board or you're not going to fit in well. All this little fluff gospel that's been going on for centuries, it is not God. It's not God. So I'm calling you out this morning. I really believe this is what the Lord wanted me to do. I just think it's time that we become a New Testament church. A New Testament church that signs and wonders shall follow. The Bible says. What the Bible says. God said these words in John 14. Greater things the Elkhorn Baptist Church would do than even what he did when he walked on the earth. That's right. yeah. Wow. Wow. Greater things? Are you kidding me? No. 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 I'm not kidding you. I believe there's so much power in this house today that we can raise the dead if they die and God wants them to come back. I believe there's so much power in this house right now that we can walk on water if God calls us out of the boat. 
I believe there's so much power, hallelujah, in this house today that if I get put in the lion's den, I'll come out. I believe if they turn the heat up, I'll smell like a rose. Hallelujah. I believe this. I believe this. The most precious book in the world. They've tried to burn it. <laughs> They've tried to get rid of it. They've tried to say it's not true. But my God keeps rising up. They've tried to take him out of the schools, but he keeps praying. The Word of God will stand when everything else fades away. The Word of God, what we preach and what we believe, what I stand on. Hey, there it is. You can't move me because I'm standing on the promises. And when I'm standing on the promises, you can't move it. It's unshakable. It'll fix you. It'll redeem you. It'll help your marriage. It'll fix your marriage. It'll bless this church. I was praying up here the other night. I'll never forget this. And little Caden Bell, he came up to me. He looked at me. Straight up at me, he said, pray for me. How old's Caden? How old is he? Seven. Seven. Ooh, I stepped on the word again. Isn't that good? I'm just going to leave it there. Step all over. He came up to me, he said, pray for me. And this is the truth. Y'all can laugh if you want to. I was praying for that little feller. And all of a sudden, his legs gave out. Went down like that. Went down. And I picked him up by his head. I was like, no, you're not. And I just asked him, I said, God, what are you doing in this little fella? And I'll never forget the words the Lord told me. He said, he's mine. Elkhorn's God's. This preacher is the Lord's. That praise team is the Lord's. You are the Lord's. My children are the Lord's. That chair I'm sitting in is the Lord's. The hair on my head is the Lord's. Somebody help me praise Him. Everything in this world belongs to the Lord. Come on. He deserves it. Put your hands together. Come on. Come on, praise Him. Everything belongs to the Lord. Everything belongs to the Lord. Everything belongs. To the Lord. Oh, oh, hallelujah. And I'm telling you today, some of you, some of you are living off broke neck principles simply because you've not given your wife over to the Lord. Woo! Preach that, preacher. You've not given your husband over to the Lord. You're telling them, hallelujah, you're telling them what they're doing wrong. But God's saying, hey, work with what's right. Build off the godly principles. Quit telling people what they're doing wrong. And give them over to the Lord. I stick the Holy Ghost on everybody in this house. I stick the Holy Ghost on everybody in this house. I stick the Holy Ghost from the top of your head to the bottom of the soles of your feet. I know some of you are so intellectual and you think you've got everything you need. But I've come by to tell you today, you need more. Baptize them in the Holy Ghost. You say, I don't believe it. Well, you won't have it. <laughs> you won't get it. You're questioning. And I'm telling you today, Quit living off broke neck principles and give them to the Lord. 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 God can do more than what you can do. Yeah, John, God can do more than what you can do. You believe that? Give them to, I don't even know. Give it to the Lord. Give your ministry to the Lord. You got me? Give your ministry to the Lord. Whew. I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't know what y'all feel. But I feel the Lord. 
and he's got me and I can't go back I ain't going back you kidding me I ain't going back to who I used to be I can't go back I ain't going back what about you hallelujah don't live off broke neck principles Brooke bad live off God Father God in the name of Jesus put marriages hallelujah I, I love I love a married couple that's praying together Lord God wrap them in your glory Lord build their home upon godly principles God no weapon formed against them shall prosper God I plead the blood of God over their home over their children over their babies over everything God fill them with the Holy Ghost church are you living off broke neck principles God said redeem it or break its neck redeem it or break its neck in other words either redeem it to me give it to me or break its neck and get it out of the way Woo! how oh, it's good preaching break its neck or give it to me give it to God or break its neck give it to God or break its neck this section give it to God or what give it to God or what give it to God or what give it to God I, that's it today either it's God's or break its neck and get it out of the way ah. hallelujah y'all come